And a good Sunday morning to you. I'm Pastor Allen, and welcome to North Eden Baptist Church. We continue to miss you guys so greatly. Uh, we pray that you're definitely staying safe and that all is going well for you. And of course, as staff, we look forward to the day where we can all come back together once again. One of the things that we have greatly missed during this pandemic is family vacations. And I bring that up because Pastor Andy has asked each of us to share with you one of our favorite vacations. I have had so many. I feel really blessed. I've had so many amazing vacations. So I was thinking about a recent one. I think it was about five or six years ago. Pam Austin and I went to the high country of Montana. And on one of our journeys out there, we actually went to Glacier National Park and chose some trails back in the high country, some very remote places. And as we started hiking, we were headed to a lake that would be frozen over with like a greenish blue ice cover and a glacier nearby. But on the way, it was like being on a safari. I never got to put my camera away because it seemed like around every corner there was another animal. I remember the first animal we encountered was a moose, and I took a ton of pictures. Then there was a pronghorn, and I took pictures of that. Then there were mountain uh, goats, and I took pictures of them on the side of a mountain. And then there were bighorn sheep, and then there was marmots, and then a black bear. I'm telling you, it just kept going. I felt like I was on a safari, and I never put the camera away. I was in the habit of every few minutes taking a picture of an animal. Well, on the way back from the lake, there was another animal... It was embedded in the bushes maybe 10 feet away. It turned out it was a grizzly bear. And I, just out of habit, I stopped and I was taking pictures of it. And all of a sudden, I felt a hand grab my shirt collar and pull me real fast to get away. It was Austin. And he's whispering to me, Dad, what are you doing? And I wasn't thinking. I mean, there was a grizzly bear right there. I got some amazing pictures, though. But I think Austin probably saved my life that day. Looking back, though, it was a wonderful trip. So I thought I would share that with you. I also want to share with you the call to worship today. It comes from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. God has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And all God's people said, Amen. Hey, everybody. I want to share with you our favorite vacation. Rhonda has had on her bucket list for years to go to New York City and see the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. So on Christmas Day 2017, I surprised her and we flew to New York City. She also was surprised because her sister and brother-in-law flew in from Arizona and met us there. So the four of us spent the whole week from Christmas Day through New Year's Day in New York City. It also happened to be the coldest week they'd had in New York City in many, many, many years. We did not have the right clothes to wear. We ended up buying very, very expensive winter coats while we were in New York City. But we just had a fabulous time. We walked and walked and walked. We probably averaged five to seven miles walking a day. But we saw the Christmas tree Christmas evening. We went out to dinner a number of times. We saw two different Broadway shows and just had a fabulous time in New York City. Probably the coldest week we've spent together as a married couple. But it was it was probably our most memorable and, and best vacation that we've had so far. So I don't know what's next, but not much can top that. Thanks a lot. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in 
the trees when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it. That on the my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. In humble adoration, and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Good morning, North Dunedin Baptist Church. This morning, Pastor Andy asked us pastors to uh, talk about a favorite vacation of ours. And while this might not be uh, my most favorite or anything like that, it is a memorable one. And I thought it would be funny for you to uh, hear the story. And so I remember when I was younger, maybe five, six, seven years old, my uh, parents and I, and I think my sister, decided to go to Dollywood. And so on our journey along there, we stopped at many places and enjoyed all the sights on the way up there. And as we pulled in, it seemed very reminiscent of National Lampoons. There was no one in the parking lot. It was very empty, very quiet. And so we thought, oh, maybe we're early or maybe uh, we're just the first people here. Uh, we'll go and check to see what time they open. And so as we walked up to the front, we were uh, so kindly stopped and uh, was told that the park was closed for the day and so all of our efforts and all of our hopes to go to Dollywood were at that point crushed and as I think about it now it, it just makes me laugh because it's one of those things that you could never plan it's like a once in a million time so my verse that I'm going to be reading this morning is from 1st John verse 2 or verse 1st John 2 verse 28 and it says, And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. The reason why I picked this was that it just talks about uh, that we will have confidence in Jesus Christ when he comes. That if we abide in him and he abides in us, we will not shrink from shame, but we will be able to stand before him and be able to uh, enjoy that time with him. So if you want to pray with me, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you that uh, 
while we are still not able to meet in person, that we are able to join together and pray together and meet together here online. Lord, I pray for Pastor Andy as he delivers the word this morning, and I pray for all the pastors as they are doing their specific duties. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we are able to share together in, in some sort of semblance of church and that we pray that we are able to get back to church soon. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, hello, everybody. It's Pastor Kyle. I am coming at you from my bedroom. Uh, it is warm in my house. Uh, if you can kind of tell, my hair is a little sweaty. Uh, our AC was having some issues earlier that they fixed, but it's uh, 81 degrees right now in this house. And uh, that's a really warm temperature for me. According, apparently, according to Pastor Andy's email on Monday, he'd be so comfortable and happy in this place, but it's pretty warm for us. Um, I am going to share my favorite vacation that I remember, and it came in 2013. Uh, Mary and I went to Marco Island, and to explain why such a short trip away, which is right, right around Naples, uh, in Florida, but to explain why such a short trip was so impactful and so meaningful and so special, I need to take you back to when we first got married. We got married in July of 2012, July 6th. We just hit our eight-year anniversary. And um, almost immediately, there was a student in the youth group that I was serving with at the time. It was not I was not yet at North Indian Baptist uh, that was having a really rough family life, and he needed a place to stay. And so almost immediately, we got married. And this high school boy moved into our house. Uh, so he lived there for probably about a month. And then he, we were able to get him an apartment uh, and a job and everything. And, and he was able to kind of start taking care of himself. Then, uh, sadly, Mary's mom had cancer. And uh, she was living by herself in, in Gulfport, uh, which is near St. Pete. But uh, we brought her to live at our house because she needed someone that could help take care of her. And uh, she didn't need to be alone. Uh, she needed to be in a house with people. So then almost immediately after the high school boy left, Mary's mom moved in and lived with us until she died in September of 2013. So a couple, couple months later, uh, we, uh, after she passed, Mary and I booked a trip to Marco Island. And um, we loved her mom dearly. We miss her still. We can't wait to see her. I actually got to lead her to the Lord before she passed away, which was a real privilege. But uh, that trip to Mark Island was so special because um, we just, it was finally a moment where it was just the two of us. We could breathe and relax a little bit. Uh, we got to, we had some friends of ours, some dear friends that lived uh, in Naples, uh, which is right next to it. And so we got to spend a, a, an evening with them having dinner and hanging out. Uh, we got to just go shopping. We got to go lay out on the beach, sit on the pool, take naps. It was an absolutely amazing trip for one that was so close to home. Uh, and, and, and not so far away. So that would be my favorite vacation that I've ever taken. I picked these next two songs that we're going to do because the passage that Pastor Andy's preaching out of in 1 Peter talks about mercy, the mercy of Christ. And so we're going to do two songs. His Mercy is More we did about uh, three or four weeks ago. And then we're going to do a song called Your Mercy uh, that was introduced to me um, probably about four or five years ago. Uh, that was really special that we actually played at uh, Pastor Doug's uh, 10th anniversary at North Indian Baptist Church. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy Since they are made. 
lavish on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath the debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is born. Praise the Lord, his mercy is born.
Stories of the Bible. Peter walks on water. This is Peter. Hey, oh! Peter was a fisherman who was called by Jesus. Hey. Peter saw the many miracles of Jesus. Whoa! And he heard all his teachings. Great crowds followed Jesus wherever he went. One day after Jesus had done a great miracle, he sent the disciples in a boat across the lake, while he stayed and sent the people home. See ya. Hey, Jesus. After sending them home, Jesus went up into the hills by himself to pray. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, "It's a ghost!" Hold on there. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid," he said. "Take courage. I am here." Hmm. Then Peter called to him, "Lord, if it's really you." Tell me to come to you walking on the water. So Jesus said, "Yes, come." So Peter went over the side of the boat. Whoa, you're awesome! And walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, ah! he was terrified and began to sink. Peter, help me! Save me, Lord! He shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Jesus said. You have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him and said, "You really are the Son of God." Sing with us, "What a friend we have in Jesus." What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. A friend so faithful, who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy? Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise or say?
this last song I've picked is based directly out of the passage that we're studying today. And it talks about how this stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This song, All to Us, sings about that exact cornerstone that the church is built on, that our lives are built on, that everything we do should be built on. And so as we sing this song called All to Us, think about the lyrics that we're singing in the chorus that we want our whole lives, the purpose of the church, to proclaim the glory of Christ. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. of God be a holy flame that burns let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives we believe you're all to us only son of God sent from heaven
Jesus, you are all to us. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining with us. I, I hope you've enjoyed some of these stories about vacations from the different guys. And obviously, we're praying that Doug uh, gets better. He's had this before, and I guess when you use your voice too much or sing too much, there's little things that can happen in your throat. But anyway, we're praying that he can get back with us soon and uh, be back on his on online uh, presence. Uh, we are still trying uh, and hoping for our August 2nd reopen. Uh, obviously, we meet each Tuesday, and we're following the um, news as, as much as we can uh, to make it safe. And um, we will obviously keep you posted. Uh, again, we'll talk about that uh, this coming uh, Tuesday. Well, I asked the guys, as I just said, to share some of their favorite vacations. And as I started thinking about it, and the reason I asked them to share, by the way, is because we can't go on vacation right now. Um, and so uh, I was kind of going back. You know, one of the good things about taking a vacation is you get to relive it. And so when you're at my age, I've had a lot of vacations. And so the most recent probably and the most impactful for me and I think Jennifer was uh, to see uh, Jennifer's first view of the Grand Canyon. Um, we both started crying. It was just so overwhelming to look at that uh, canyon. And uh, so that was a, obviously a very memorable um, vacation for us. And then I think the other one is one of our first vacations was to Hawaii. And we had not been to Hawaii before. And we just had uh, the time of our lives uh, over in Hawaii. Uh, I think that was on our honeymoon. <laughs> so that, that is a memory I, uh, vacation I must say is one of my favorite. So today I want to continue in 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read the text to you, and I know you, this is probably a good time for you to go grab a cup of coffee while I do it, because it's just, a, it's kind of a choppy uh, passage, uh, uh, and that's kind of the way Peter lived his life. He was a go get him guy and spoke first, think second, but this is really beautifully written, but it's just hard to understand. So let me just read what I'm going to talk about today uh, for you says, therefore, putting aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. If you've tasted the kindness of the Lord, and coming to him as to a living stone, rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. And now he starts quoting a bunch of Old Testament. He says, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone. And he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. And verse 7 says, This precious value then is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word and to this doom they were also appointed. But you, you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are a people, the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So I broke this text into two major points, and then obviously I'll have comments under each of these two points. The first one is found in verse 1, and it says we need to get rid of some stuff. And then my second point is, we need to embrace some stuff. So let's start by looking at how we need to get rid of some stuff. There in verse 1, he says, therefore, 
And remember, I've told you before, class, when you see the word therefore, you stop and ask yourself, why is the word therefore there for? And you have to find out. Well, in this case, he's referring to verse 23 of chapter 1. He says, for you have been born again. He's saying, therefore, you have been born again. And then in chapter 2 and verse 3, he says, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. In other words, um, therefore, you are a child of God. And as a child of God, you need to think about how you present yourself and how you're living your life. I asked Jennifer Primrishan to tell you this story, and she has no problem with this story. When I had just turned 21, I was a junior in college in Birmingham, Alabama, and a freshman came in, and her name was Mona. And so Mona and I started talking, and we started dating a little bit. And remember, school starts in August, so by November, we were, we were pretty serious. And so I offered to drive her home for Thanksgiving. So we jumped in my Dodge Charger and uh, drove down from Birmingham to a little town called Reeves, Louisiana, which is just outside 45 minutes from Lake Charles. And um, we, we turned left off of the, the main road, which is a logging road, um, and, and turned into the driveway. And there were all these cars. And I was like, Man, why are there all these cars? Well, they all came because Mona was like Miss Reeves and Miss Betty Crocker and all this stuff. And her dad, which I found out, was the mayor. Now, granted, there's only 300 people, but still, he was the mayor. And he worked on the dock, so he was a man's man. So we walk into the front room, and I had prepared myself because I wanted to present myself well so that they would like me. And uh, so we walk in the front room, and the front room is not very big, but it's full of people. And uh, he was sitting in a chair all the way in the corner across from the front door. And Mona walked over to him and gave him a kiss, and he just sat there and looked at me. And it was scary. But I'm telling you, I prepared myself for that moment. And I'm saying that to say there's going to be a moment when you and I get to walk across the room and see Jesus eye to eye. And I, I think he will stand up and he will, he will greet us. But you and I need to prepare uh, how we look and how we present ourselves. It's like when you met your mate's parents for the first time, which I just described. You get really nervous about it. You know what's funny? Um, I, I had just turned 21. Well, the next time I met my future mother-in-law, I was 35. And when I met Jennifer's mother, I, I wasn't that nervous. I mean, I, I met her and I was, but again, I wanted to present myself well. So this is what he's saying. He's saying, listen, you need to get rid of some stuff. If you're a follower of Christ, you need to get rid of these things. And he says it here. He says, putting aside, and that word putting aside means to cast away. It, it means to take something off. And I, it, this is a participle. So if it's a participle, it, it means keep on putting aside, keep on taking off, keep on casting away. And the reason he says that is because the life that you and I live, these, these things that we don't want, these traits that we don't want will creep back into our lives. And he's saying you need to be aware and keep casting these things off. Don't let them stick in your life. He says... We need to take away malice, which is basically wickedness. It's anything that is not excellent. Remember, we're told to think on the things that are excellent. It sounds like, what is it, Ed and Ted's Great Adventure or something? <laughs> um, he says to cast away guile, and guile is deceit. Um, we shouldn't be deceiving people. We should be honest. And remember, in being honest, that doesn't mean that just because you have an opinion, you need to share it. When people ask you for your opinion, then certainly share it. But um, you don't need to always be telling everything that you think to everybody that has an ear. Thirdly, he says, get rid of hypocrisy. 
And we've seen that word in the New Testament before. It's, it's basically a word for someone who wears a mask. Uh, it's an actor. Back in this day, they didn't have makeup and special uh, makeup to transform people's faces with makeup artists. What they did was they made masks, and they'd hold them up and jump around a little stage with the little masks on. And those were actors who were called hypocrites. <clears throat> they'd take the mask off, and you'd see who the real person was. Very descriptive word. And he's saying here, don't be a hypocrite. Um, Again, don't be a pretender. He says, get rid of envy or jealousy. Man, that is such an animal. Jealousy can eat us alive. I I wish we had the discipline to not compare. I I wish we had the discipline to be happy in the skin in which we're in, that we would do self-evaluation and self-improvement guided by the Word of God, rather than looking around at other people and seeing what they're doing and then saying, oh, well, if they're doing it, then we need to do it. Or they're doing it worse than we are. We're doing it better than they are. Or they're doing it better than we are. So, I mean, that the whole comparison thing is is ridiculous. And I have to say, there's a ton of that that happens with pastors. I've gone to many pastors' retreats. And the one in California, we went to a place called Silver Spur, and it was always the week after Easter. So the guys would walk up to each other, embrace each other, and then instead of saying, how are you doing, they'd say, how many did you have in church Sunday? And I'm like, I don't know, I didn't count. I mean, what does it matter how many people I had in church Sunday? He's saying a a slander, uh, speaking bad things about people that just aren't true. That's wrong. And whether it's even a half-truth, that's wrong. So he's saying you need to cast away malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Um, these things are supposed to be banned from the Christian life, and we, we should have nothing to do with them. So first point, get rid of some stuff. Second point, embrace some stuff. He says there in verses 2 and 3, he says, embrace God's word. He says, like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow. You've got to eat to grow, or you either grow to eat. I don't know which one comes first, but he's saying, like a newborn babe long for the pure milk of the word. When babies are born, they're born with a skill. And that's one of my questions I have for God. And that question is... um, when you designed babies and you gave them the gift of crying, how did you find that sound that is the most irritating sound in the world? I mean, if I was running a torture chamber, I would, I would play crying babies for 24 hours and you'd get an answer within two because you just can't. It's like right in between where it's supposed to be. And um, so when they start getting hungry, you start hearing it and you move fast because you don't want to hear it. So embrace the word of God. He says to embrace the kindness of Christ. Again, we read this earlier, but it says, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, meaning Jesus was kind. He was uh, gracious to us. Through God's grace, we don't get what we do deserve, which is everlasting death and punishment for our sin. Instead, we get what we don't deserve, which is forgiveness and everlasting life in heaven. That's grace. That's kindness. Jesus is not a drill sergeant. He's a shepherd. He's the savior of the world. A third thing to embrace is the person of Christ. In verse 4, he says then, and coming to him as a living stone, and notice this living stone is rejected by men, but it is counted as choice and precious in the sight of God. Man, you got two polar opposite views here. Now, when he uses the word living stone, and he uses the word stone a bunch of times in this uh, text, he's talking about the building of the church. And when Jesus said, I will build my church, and he's building the church on the fact that he is Christ, the son of the living God. And so he is the cornerstone. I'm not an architect. I'm not a contractor. But you who are builders understand 
and would agree with me that your, your cornerstone has to be level, has to be aimed right, because everything else, if you're building with stone, is built on that foundation. And if you're off, then you're going to have one wall that goes that way and another wall goes that way. So that cornerstone has to be just right. And that's, that, is, that is Christ. He is this living stone. So we need to embrace the person of Christ. I know you've done that or you wouldn't be watching this video today. He also says next then, we need to embrace the church. It says, and, and he's talking both about the universal church, meaning Christians around the world, and he's talking about the local church where we used to gather together and eventually will. But he talks about that. He says in verse 5, you also are living stones, and you're being built up as a spiritual house. Now, that spiritual house is that universal church and that local church. And he says, and here's how you're doing it. We're doing it because we, we, we sacrifice, um, we offer sacrifices um, to God through the actions and the conduct and the self-denial and the self-discipline that we exercise. And we do that because he says, first, you're a holy priesthood. Now, a priest is someone who is, uh, the word means to build a bridge. And a priest is, if you literally look at it, a priest is, stands between God and man and is a conduit. Well, we're all priests. And Jesus Christ is our high priest. He's the one who stands between us and God. And so he's saying we need to embrace this church. Um, we are the living stones that build the church. Um, we, we are priests of the living church. We need to offer sacrifices to God in the church. And then he says again that Christ is that cornerstone um, for us. If you keep reading in verses 6 and 7. The next thing we need to do is embrace our purpose here on earth. And he says that in verses 9 and 10. He says, listen, let, let, me, let me say some things to you. And I'm going to say it my way, but he, this is what he means. He's saying, you have a purpose. And, and here's why you need to embrace your purpose. Because we are a chosen people, chosen by God. He loves you. Because we are chosen people, because we are royal priests, which I just talked about, because we are a holy nation, this is all right here in verse 9, and because we are a people for God's own possession, because of all of that, he says then in verse 9, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into light. Listen the excellencies of him who called you. Our purpose is to proclaim the excellencies of Christ, where he took us from darkness to light, to no mercy, to mercy. We were dead and we have been made alive. We had no purpose, and I'm telling you right now, you have purpose. The thing is, we were unforgiven, and now we're forgiven. And it's all because of the excellencies of of Christ. All right, let me close by doing this. I had the guys share about their trips and their vacations, and I'm probably saying this to all of them because I think they all would have done this. We don't just take a dart and throw it in a map and say, okay, that's where we're going. No, what we do is we jump online and we go to TripAdvisor, we go to Yelp, we, we go on site to 3A. And, and you pick the spots you want to go, then you have to figure out how you're going to get there. Are you going to fly, take a bus, take a train, take a car, walk, swim? But you figure out how you're going to get there. And then you're like, okay, once we get there, we have to have a place to stay. So then you look for a place to stay. And then you're, you're like, well, we also have to eat, so we need to find a place to eat. And we're going to be there for five days, so we need to find lots of places to eat. And so you run off the favorite 10 restaurants in the area. And then you're like, well, what do you want to do? Okay, then we run off the top 10 things to do in the area. So you plan your trip. And what you do is you look at what other people have said that have taken that same trip that you took or are going to take. And so they will recommend to you and give you advice and share their experience of what you hope to do. 
All Peter's saying here is, if you are born again, get rid of the junk in your life. Embrace the good stuff that God just outlined for us through Peter. And then become a trip advisor. Become a Yelp um, subscriber, a Yelp person who writes on Yelp, <laughs> a Yelper. And so other people can see as you're walking through your Christian life and we can share our stories and say, man, this is some good stuff. So my fellow trip advisors, I pray you have a great week and that you stay safe. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the words of Peter and it's challenging, it's convicting, it's encouraging. And I just pray that as we continue to navigate uh, this landscape of COVID, that we would continue to discipline ourselves to stay safe. And we pray for those who are doing research to try to find ways to overcome it. We pray for those who have tested positive, that they would be able to overcome th this sickness. And I pray that you'd give us wisdom as a church, because I know it's really frustrating for a lot of us that we can't come together, and yet we still want to stay safe, and so we just need your wisdom from on high. We ask for wisdom at our national level, our state level, and our local level, level as they make decisions as well. We thank you that we have tasted the kindness of our Christ, and that we can talk about the excellencies of of our God. I pray that you would find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, a couple things then. Uh, obviously, I'm thanking you again as I do each week for your prayers, your support, and your feedback. You know, Mondays I send out the email to you. Last week I did it on Tuesday, but usually it's on a Monday, and it's, it's humbling, the stuff you write back to us, and because I don't, you know, I appreciate you doing that. And then the financial support, again, I came in uh, to the church this morning and there was four little envelopes waiting to be put in the safe. And, and we talk about it at a staff level and uh, every single one of us is humbled by your faithfulness. And I know some of you are sacrificing and then I even know there's some of you who have written to me and said, listen, if somebody needs help, I want to help them. And I'm just, uh, one person did that, it brought me to tears. I was so touched by that. Again, we continue to raise our funds so that we can keep our online presence. In this last month, we've had 20 new subscribers that jumped on that are onto our website that uh, want to stay on. And so that's a wonderful thing. We're reaching people that maybe couldn't get to church. Uh, some many homebound people, sick people, compromised people. So this is an important thing and we need your help to make that, to make that happen. And then don't forget the guys are online. Uh, on Monday, you get Pastor Kyle. He's doing First uh, John. And every now and then, we get a Cohen or Marshall sighting, which is kind of cool. Um, in our household, we're, we're still waiting for a Mary sighting and hoping that'll happen someday. And then uh, on Tuesdays, you get Alan, and he is taking us through the book of Ganao, uh, Genesis, and um, doing a great job with that because it's got a lot of science in it, and Alan likes science. And then Brad does our prayer meeting on Wednesday, and he does a fantastic job with that. And then Doug, if he can get a squeak out, maybe he'll be back on on Thursday. If not, uh, he won't be there. But otherwise, we're there Monday through Thursday, and hope you can join us at 6.30. The guys always take a couple minutes to give you time to log on. They don't just start right at it. And you cannot log on until 6.30. Some of you try to log on at 6.20. It's not there. You have to get your little reminder and wait till it says the video is about to premiere. And then it'll give you a number and it'll count it down. And then it'll say, your video is now premiering. Click. So having said all that, I just hope you have a great week. Thanks. This is a new benediction I'd like to teach us today. It's called the people of God. It goes right along with the message today. With our lips let us sing one confession With our hearts hold to one truth alone For he has erased our transgressions 
claimed us and called us his own, his very own. We're the people of God, called by his name, called from the dark and delivered from shame. One holy race, saints everyone, because of the blood of Christ, Jesus the Son. We're the people of God, called by His name, called from the dark and delivered from shame. One holy race, saints everyone, because of the blood of Christ, Jesus the Son.